Ladies and gents, welcome and ooh, what an interesting little map. It seems awfully familiar, but we've done so many games at this point. I've probably done thousands of community games if I were to go back and do all the math on it. So welcome. We've got eight kings on this one. And for the last year, year and a half, especially, we've done a lot of exploding kings. So we do have exploding kings in this game. Eight kings, eight players, and uh, one player will be victorious. Or so we think. Maybe there will be some type of allied situation. Um, in the yellow, we have Huds Mars playing as the Aztecs. In the green, we have Samuroi playing as the Burmese. In the teal, we have Stealth Arras playing as the Goths. In the red, we've got the R286 playing as the Burgundians. In the gray, we've got Kuko playing as the Italians. In the blue, we have Average Rye Bread Consumer playing as the Celts. And then uh, we have Non Fox, and he's completely accepted that that's how I pronounce his name at this point, which makes me happy. It took years of work. Um, when he told me who he was earlier in the Discord, he said F O X, Non Fox. And then uh, playing as the Bohemians, excuse me. And then we have Kristoff playing as the Britons in the orange. There's water on the map, so you could fish on this. Uh, we could maybe see some transportation at some point. And there is a very, or a very useless area in the middle. Uh, I mean, there's a couple of trees, but not a whole lot else. So there's just some wide open spaces there. The areas around the players have lots of stone and gold, though. And I mean tons of stone. Let me double click the stone, because that probably goes the whole way around. We've got 40k stone on the map. And then for golds... We have 141k, so there's actually still way more gold. I must have just found a spot where a lot of neutral stones generated. Yeah, I absolutely did. Where's the stone for yellow? <laughs> this is the area, man. If you want to get stoned, show up here. Uh, they're accepting. Um, Civ-wise, we have a lot of infantry, I'd notice. Uh, Goths, known for their infantry. Burmese, known for their infantry. Celts, known for their infantry. That's not too bad. But uh, every player here has allied already. We'll see how much chatter there is. We've obviously got some time to kill. And, oh, Masters of Arena is on the screen. I'm sorry. I was wondering why people were saying arena things. I thought it was due to the civilizations. <laughs> this is my bad, my bad, my bad. Uh, as you guys know, it, I only settle for the best level of production quality, so uh, I apologize for completely ruining the experience and the seriousness that is community games. Blue says, sorry, perp, only to you now. Okay, so he was chatting up everybody, but he said, hey, perp. No, 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 he wasn't chatting up everyone. He said, hey, perp, but everybody saw it. And he says, we are neighbors, smiley face. Okay, so... um couple things I got to say. I think we should talk about the fact that it's Exploding Kings again. So if you're going to be a bully in this game and you don't end up killing the player, they could just run right over to your base and explode in your base, right? If they're not happy with you. So if you're going to kill somebody, make sure you get the job done. It's kind of the point. There's a lot more risk involved in killing somebody with Exploding Kings. And then you have a lot more power as a weaker player with an Exploding King. That's kind of why I like it for community games these days. Is it because it gives the little man a little bit more, you know, something. Um, Purple hasn't really responded too much to non-Fox. So we'll see if that actually turns into a, a good relationship. But, okay, non-Fox is always and forever. Perfect. Um, other thing I wanted to talk about is the experience. I'm guesstimating here, but I think HUDS has been around for four or five years. I think... Huds is a name I recognized prior to the Definitive Edition, which has been four years now, actually, which is pretty wild. Um, Non-Fox has been around a bit as well. And Stealth or Us. Like, those players in particular come in here with more experience. Now, more experience does not necessarily mean more skill. Generally speaking, it does. But there are exceptions, and I will not name those ex exceptions here. But you, you know who you are. You know, if you're just someone who watches and doesn't really play in a lot of games, just been chilling out, maybe your length of stay in the community doesn't necessarily lead to you being a beast. And that's cool. The way I'm wording this is coming off rather judgy. 
So I kind of regret saying it, but whatever. Uh, any docs at all? No, we just have all the auto scouts. Oh, this is community. Yes, that's community games. Six players just put that scout on auto scout a long time ago and look at them move around. Yeah. Okay, actually, you know what would be interesting? Who is not here? Who is not part of the auto scouting community? Uh, trying to do process of elimination. There's no average rye bread consumer. And there is no samurai. I I'm just going to call green samurai. It's close enough. So I, I, I would assume that means they're maybe using their scout to push in deer. Green's kind of doing that. Average rye bread consumer. He consumes a lot of bread, apparently. Or an average amount of bread. Yes. But is very chatty compared to the others. Says, sorry for the scout. Forgot about it. Want to be friends. And Gray, Gray says yes. But Gray is currently speaking to himself in the mirror. Because he did not select the chat properly. Which could have consequences. Because Blue's trying to be Mr. Nice Guy. And if Blue doesn't get a response from Gray, Blue might be like, huh. Gray's giving me the good old cold shoulder. I'm, I'm a big fan of Blue so far. Amazing. I got into a community game. Best day of the week. I like it. it makes me happy to hear things like that. The worst part about being gray is that you think the message went through and then blue doesn't respond to you and then you begin to question that alliance as well. It's always so easy for us, but when you're in the game, you've been trying to get into a game for generations, right? Like they're, his father's yes. father has been trying to get into community games. He finally gets in. He's got to like carry the family torch and then he just screws it all up. It's sad. Arn says, I got into my first Kami ever, so a bit anxious. Is this a part where I should clarify that Kami stands for community? I should perhaps clarify that a little bit more frequently. It is funny. You, you, you could set the passwords as that. You could set the title as that. You could do all that stuff. But if, you know, if you want to say, I go scouts, the game just, just bleeps it out. It's not the worst word in the world. You know, we're just shortened for community obviously there's no other meaning wow holy market all right so these guys don't have the best of eco balance let me just uh eliminate the market buy and sell events <laughs> okay here's a question because i don't eat a lot of rye bread is there something notable about a rye bread consumer that we should know because he is the average he is an average rye bread consumer. I know I'm overthinking it, all right? I know it's just a fun name on the internet, but it does make me think. By the way, seven players on the way to Castle Age, and Red's already there. Red is already in Castle, so Red is maybe someone that we should be keeping an eye on. And again, it is on 22 villagers. He's a man of good taste, okay. Depends on where he's from, that's fair. Well, the other thing we know about Blue is that Blue has weeks in his life because he spoke about weeks. So I guess <laughs> I'm being stupid. <laughs> I, I Oh my god, the auto scouts are still together! I guess it makes sense. They're on the same path and they have shared exploration, right? Oh, look at them roam free. Oh, it's so pretty. I love auto scout. Blue is trying again with Gray. Hey, Gray, want to be friends? And now Gray goes, ah, sorry, Blue. I was talking to myself. Okay. That's... It's good he noticed. Blue says it's fine. Green, you taking deer under my TC? This <laughs> says Stealth the Rust. And Green was absolutely taking a deer <laughs> under Stealth's TC. That's funny. I doubt he noticed. I'm guessing the deer just kind of ran away and the villagers followed. <laughs> okay, so blue is uniting purple and gray currently into a team there. Dre is now trying to go to his the, the, the other player on a flank. And he's reaching out to another neighbor here. Not asking for a cup of sugar just yet. 
I like how Gray is being real chill about it. He's like kind of laughing at himself. Just realized I've been talking to myself. Do you want to be friends? And Red hasn't really been talked to much by anyone else. So Red's kind of like, yeah, this is good. Purple says, I am amenable. Which means, yeah, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with the deal. I'm okay with that team. Blue says, uh, English is not my first language. Does it mean yes? Okay, so we now know that wherever Blue is from, English is not the dominant language, which gives us more information on the type of, uh, you know, rye bread consumer he is. Liking Blue so far, as far as the chat's concerned, this is the eco at the bottom left. Stealth R Us, being goths, having the eco lead, a little terrifying for everybody else. Green says, close friends are the best of friends to Teal. Remember I said Huds has been around a long time? No chatter. Just no chat whatsoever. Could be a bad sign. Um, also haven't seen Kristoff speak much, but that's probably Kristoff just trying to not fall behind. There is that pressure there. First community game for Kristoff. Apparently Blue said he's from Bohemia. Okay, gotcha. Well, then he should... It's good that he's teamed with Purple then. Because Purple is the Bohemians. A lot of the more dominant players will not chat too much until they have their economy set up. So I would expect that we'd see more chat later on. According to AB2 Insights, Red's best sieve is Gurjara's, so I hope someone nukes him immediately. Are you doing... Are you doing homework on community game players? <laughs> is there, like, some underground betting scene for community games I'm not aware of, and you're trying to do your research here? <laughs> That's kind of funny. Blue says, who are you scared of? Teal would be scary because goths. And Purple says, my middle school English teacher. Well, he was talking about players in the game. Not real traumatic events, but sorry to hear about that one there, buddy. Anyone else have really bad teachers? I, for the most part, had pretty good teachers. I was the problem for the teachers. The teachers were not necessarily the problem for me. Yellow and green talking now. They seem to be pretty cool. Huds with the classic not bad you. He's playing hard to get over here. Doesn't really want to continue much of a conversation. Uh, build up in the bases for everybody. We've got castles going up. Again, they start with the castle, so we'll eventually see more. <laughs> My high school teachers just phoned it in. I had some high school teachers that just phoned it in. Um, I was uh, in and out of school. Like I didn't, I wasn't in, at school a lot in high school, so I really needed additional help. And let's be honest. Um, yes. Uh, how how do I? Not just help, but also literally just they kind of let things slide, keep me a little less work. They just wanted to get me graduated because it was a rough time for me. So I, I'm forever grateful for that aspect of many of my teachers. Uh, this is this is a bit weird thinking back. But no, I was the I was kind of the class clown type of guy. Um I wasn't like the really obnoxious class clown, but wasn't really the guy you wanted to be teaching, let's put it that way. Kind of feel bad for Orange. First community game ever, and every time I look over here, there's a monk from somebody else grabbing relics and just walking right through his base. Like, look, this monk wants a relic right now. It, he, oh, he's like trying to... He can't, they won't let him in the door until he delivers a relic. It's real sad. Anyways. Blue says, sorry, I'm not sure why. Um... Teal and red are apparently going to trade on the water, which is an interesting technique. Yeah, uh, substitute teachers are the ultimate phone-it-in teacher, at least in my experience at school. It's been a long time since I've been in school, so hopefully that's changed, but... You know, and then kids don't really... They're like, you have no authority over me because you're not my real teacher. And you don't even know the curriculum because you're just a substitute. Again, eco update. Lowest is gray. Actually, no, no, no. I, I, there's there's tiers of players here. You have top three. Hud, Stealth, and Non-Fox. 
So the three players that I've said have been around the longest. Everyone else is in the 60s as far as Eco is concerned. IT90, been so thankful for your incredible YouTube content recently. I've missed being able to watch live due to a new career, but buzz to catch you tonight. Grab a beer, my friend. Yo, Harry, thank you for the stars. Yeah, I've been really, really pleased with the variety of content I've been able to bring to the YouTube channel. I know not everyone can make streams for a variety of different reasons, right? But um, videos are... I mean, all of it's a bit weird, right? I never know how many people are going to watch whatever I do. But the channel has just exploded recently. Like, it has been the most successful time on YouTube uh, ever for me the last couple months. So I've been really happy with that. And I have also been putting in more work more time into it all which is always nice to see it pay off but anyways thank you was all text on 11 i have stables what he can make stables as the aztecs oh god who's the host non-fox okay so we've just learned that this is a full text tree game so that's interesting. There's not going to be quite as much uniqueness across all civilizations. So that means, like, the Britain player could make Eagle Warriors and the Aztec player could make Knights, right? Or can they only make Zolotos in all techs? I don't know. Non Fox is thanks to E, but that is very much a thanks to you. Now, what I'm not telling you is that he sent me a screenshot of the lobby and said, Is everything good? And I said, Yes. But I don't recall seeing all text selected. So it makes it an interesting game. Full text read time. Now you do still have some uniqueness. Like your unique units can separate you from others. But uh, yeah. Certainly adds to the flavor that is this game. I used to play all text because I always wanted to go hand cannons. And I just... I didn't want to not have hand cannons, so my way of wading into playing uh, with different civilizations was incorporating all techs from time to time. But then I kind of got bored with it because I kind of liked the differences between civilizations and everyone being able to make everything just kind of got boring for me. Uh, now, does that mean all blacksmith techs, guys? Because that's a really big deal if it means all blacksmith techs. People have to tell me. I haven't played all techs in a long time. But, like, you know, we, we have yellow, uh, or, or sorry, teal reaching out to yellow and red, all these players right now. But if you get all blacksmith techs, goths become stronger, right? So, normally they lack the final armor. You get that final armor. That'd be pretty insane. Uh, I don't know if Stable's the right player for just making Zlata Warriors. Yeah, Celts getting Arbalest would be kind of nice for their for their normal normal game as opposed to just needing to rely on infantry and siege. Full tech means all techs, but no sib bonuses, no unique techs. Wait, so the unique techs are straight up removed. So that would nerf the Britons then. And he's got seven range on these longbows right now. And castle age. Yeah, I mean, like, and team bonuses are gone as well? Okay. I guess it really depends. But goths can't make huskarls from barracks. Oh, wow. Dang. Okay, so it really requires some brainstorming. These guys are going to have to just look and see what options they have. Uh, that really hurts the Britons. Because you want all that crazy range. But I guess it kind of hurts all civs equally. Sort of, kind of. Like, Goths can't produce Huskers out of barracks. They also don't get perfusions. So they can't produce quickly. Hmm. Love the trade on water. Trade cog hype. I think it's smart on this map because normally you want to trade corner to corner. Obviously, there's water in these corners. You could still do what purple's going to try and what orange and yellow are going to try down here. Yeah, I think... I mean, with the amount of castles that Teal has, it's not going to be too bad if you want to go Huskarls out of those castles. Do you think we should add red to our team? Now, this is the average rye bread consumer teamed alongside purple and gray. And non-Fox says, 
He's trading with teal on water. And now gray says, I'm ally with red. And blue's like, oh, okay. So, so they have already singled out earlier that teal is the scariest player. They talked about that. So they don't feel like they can fully trust red, I guess. And so blue says, then red will go with teal if we attack. In theory, yes. But maybe you could say to red, hey, I know you're trading with teal right now, but he's a big bad bully, blah, blah, blah. Let's team up against him. And then you can trade with us. Because, like, the trade is also going this way. This is going to be confusing for me. I'm going to start seeing units from civilizations I don't normally see it with or see it from. All right. We have waited quite a bit of time. The economies are insane. The experienced players have over 150 eco. That makes three of them. We've got big techs coming in. We have Aztec Battle Elephant. Wait, you can make Battle Elephants. Oh, that's sick. <laughs> that's sick yeah because uh normally if you do somehow get a stable with aztecs which would be by converting one you can only make the zlato warrior but the zlato warrior you can't get armor upgrades on them so i assume you can get armor upgrades and whatnot here too that's really helpful actually everyone could make elephants right if everyone could make elephants you might want to consider it at least, like, you're talking pop efficiency. So if everyone's got 70 army, let's say, what's the strongest 70 army you can get? You didn't learn how the Aztecs used to battle elephants against the Spanish in history class? I must have missed that one. Do you guys want to hear, uh... <laughs> Do you guys want to hear a story about... Like, two little side stories about school for me growing up? I think I've told both of these before. Um, so, because we're talking about history class. My history teacher in high school was so freaking cool. As I said, like, I was unable to attend school a lot of the time. And so there was a lot of hand-holding to, like, get me graduated and whatnot. To make a long story short, right? Some people were more understanding than others, right? But, like, in some classes, I just straight up didn't like it or I wasn't good at it. History, I actually really, really liked. I was always super interested in it. It's easy for me to retain some levels of information and then forget it all by the time I became a popular streamer. You guys make fun of my lack of history knowledge. But anyways, I um, I liked it, is the point. And the teacher's name, I don't know if I should say his name. You can look him up. He's retired now. His name was Bob. <laughs> okay? His name was Bob. He's an old man, right? And uh, so anyways, Bob was just the nicest dude he loved his storytelling and uh he had a unique way of teaching and whatnot so the problem is i loved the class but i had really bad sleeping issues like um influence from medications i was on uh combined with sleep apnea and restless leg and all these things that weren't diagnosed at that time i just knew i had really bad sleeping issues and i would fall asleep i i always sat in the front and I would fall asleep in his class constantly. Like, every class I fell asleep. But, like, it was just constant, right? I always felt so bad. And so he would do this thing where he'd pace back and forth as he's telling stories. And he would, instead of calling me out in class because he started to realize, he would give me a little kick on the foot. And I'd, like, snap awake, right? <laughs> and then it, it got so bad, guys. <laughs> he actually pulled me aside at one point and said... It's actually not funny. It's actually horrible I went through this. It's so embarrassing. He actually pulled me aside and he was like, would it make sense for you to just stand? He's like, I'm okay with that if you just wanted to stand in the back of the class. I was like, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I genuinely, at one point, thankfully started things started to get better soon after this. I genuinely fell asleep while standing and knocked my head in like the corner of the wall and woke back up because I was like standing in the corner. Actually happened. I feel so bad for Bob because he was such a good teacher and I said I cared and I really did care but who's gonna think a kid cares when I am falling asleep constantly so anyways Bob's like the coolest guy right me and my crew because I definitely needed more things to distract myself from actual schoolwork 
we figured out a way to bypass the school's systems on the computers, like the security systems, and get video games onto the computers, okay? And senior year, um, yes. instead of going to lunch, we would sneak into the computer lab because it was typically vacant, and if it wasn't, my one friend, uh, my one friend's mom was really close with the computer teacher, so she kind of let any him do anything, and he would get us in. We'd go in there, and we would have Counter-Strike games, like 6v6 Counter-Strike games in the school, right? Now, <laughs> in order to spice things up, I still can't believe we didn't get in big trouble for this. To spice things up, we would name our characters after teachers in the school. We're sniping each other. We're doing headshots and shootings. We're playing it in the school, naming the characters after faculty at the school. Never got in trouble somehow. Like, I can't even imagine. I can only imagine how, like, not okay that is. Um, it was just what we did. And it would not fly today. <laughs> but that's what we did. And so, um, yeah, that was the thing. Oh, my God, dude. Green, what are these towers, bro? So, anyways, I'm, like, falling asleep in this guy's class. And then, by the time lunch rolls around, I'm headshotting him in Counter-Strike. <laughs> Which is kind of, on paper, is, is pretty bad. Um, yeah, so, funny side note, it looks like we're about to see some action here. There's a lot of chat. And these guys are chatting away. They're like, man, T90's gonna look at my chat. I'm so excited. And then I'm telling a story. But, um, as the engagement's about to go down here, because Yellow's making a move, headed to the other side. When we graduated... My buddy who figured out how to get, like, all the stuff from the systems and, like, bypass the thing. Um, he handed one of the, the guys in the junior class a, a, like, a folder with information on how to set up the games, how to avoid detection, and the systems that we use to make it happen. I thought that was pretty cool. <laughs> so, yeah. Aztec Elite Elephants. We've got 14 plus 4 attack. Um, we've got... 320 HP. So it's just like standard full upgraded battle elephants. There's no extra uniqueness to it. From what I picked up amongst my storytelling here, this is going to be yellow, green, and teal. I mean, real strong players from what I'm seeing. Headed over towards red, gray, and blue. And you've got Arn saying I'm a piece with yellow because he scares me. And there's a lot of production buildings right now. I have to say the Aztecs tables look really freaking cool. Maybe in the top three of all stables in the game. Yellow says 14. I'm going to turn it over to military count now because we don't really need the eco count. And this is going to be... You know, again, there's, there's no uniqueness from the Goths, but still, it's Goths. I shouldn't even call it goth infantry. Let's just say lots of infantry spam from a player who happens to be goths. He's got the barracks prepped, and it's going to be elephants as well. So halbs and elephants against elite Kustia, which is great, but you're going to need some support. Ray does have elite Genoese crossbowmen, which would actually be really good against all this. Red is trading with Teal. He might be on to me. Ooh, yeah. Has Red been chatting at all? He's talking, trying to talk to Green. He hasn't been that chatty with Gray. Red, are you friends with Teal and Yellow? They look scary. Trying to get Red to talk. And Red's not responding to Blue. It says Teal, yes. Haven't said anything to Yellow. I mean, which is honest. It doesn't seem like Yellow's speaking to him. Stealth says, wait, Orange is with yes. us now? And Yellow says, yes. Orange is also trading through the middle of the map, which is the most, like, wholesome first community game move you could ever do. Not worth it. <laughs> the second fighting's going down, you're going to lose this trade, but it does give you, you know, more gold per trip than any of the other land trade is. 
Blue is saying that Orange is out of his base right now. Stealth or Rust says, I'm not sure how to tell you this, but Yellow, Green, and Orange want to attack you. Which is, I believe, what's going down here. So Stealth or Rust is giving Red a heads up. And Red says rip. So, I mean, nice from Teal to, to do this. If Red survives, it's possible Teal will have an ally for life because of this. And Red's like, he's like, try and sway them, please. He says, can you tell them to go after the Alliance? And Yellow says publicly, sorry, Red. We got to start this action at some point. <laughs> Someone in chat. Good old cuddle box of a game. Come on, guys. This is a war game. Yeah, Desvald, you've been around as long as HUD, so you guys think the same way. Anyways, Red's King is in that castle. And there's a whole lot of thumpage right now. You gotta run. You gotta get out of here at some point, And you gotta try and defend yourself. It's very loud thumpage. And there's just too much army here. <laughs> Longbows, halbs, and elephants. Red never stood a chance. Now, Red, you need to recognize in this moment that a weapon you do have is that king. You're probably going to be focused on trying to stay alive, which is understandable. But if you're ever at a point where you're not able to, to win this game, you got to get that king over to one of their bases. Also, ideally, you keep the king alive now, because otherwise you are dead. And oh my goodness, Red, notice it! He noticed he could make eagles and elephants. He didn't notice that. And sad times for Red. I do feel bad for you. Teal tried to give you a heads up, but it wasn't much of a heads up. And, uh, well, Red calls the GG. There will be an explosion here, so everyone wants to evacuate. Red will lose his pretty base. And there's the explosion. And, man, it catches me off guard every time. All right. So, I mean, that could have been bad for Teal, because Teal tried to do the right thing and tell Red ahead of time what was happening. If Red would have somehow died closer to Teal, that could have hurt. What is this, though? We got 29 Bombard Towers from Green. Green's really playing this serious. Gray next. He is attacking me, says Yellow. So, we see this a lot, where players... They pick a team, they don't really know who to fight or when to fight. And then there's always a dominant player who just says, Alright guys, this is the plan. So, and we also see this a lot where we will have... Um, we will almost have a, a 3v3 and then two players on the outside, on the fritz. Or killed in this case. It's technically a 3v4. And blue's now going to work with gray and with purple. So that's three people here. And then we've got green. We've got orange. I am still curious on teal, though. Like, I actually feel like teal might want to backstab at some point and kill green. Especially because green is... He's just built up so many fortifications. It's a bit weird. Like, you want to fortify, but you don't want to fortify so much that they just focus on you. Now, these are longbows with thumb ring. So they are firing faster, they're more accurate, whatever. But they just don't have the range. Honestly, should still be very, very strong against Genoese Crossbowmen, because Genoese Crossbowmen lack range, so... Still looking at 9 range. These things are wrecking right now. But Purple's making look quite a few helps. Here's a question. If it's all techs... Well, I guess if you can't make... No, no, no. I was going to say, can you make Huskarls if you're not Goths? But no, it doesn't work like that. It doesn't allow you to make other people's unique units. I was just thinking units out of the barracks, but yeah. Lou is researching Siege Onager with the Celts. Again, you won't get Fur Celtica. But still, you will have faster firing Siege, I think. Right? That should be nice. The Longbows are extremely satisfying to watch. Green decides to hop in on the Elephant Train as well. And we've got Siege Elephants. We've got Elephants. We've got Champs. We've got Longbows. And we have Scorpions! Which are good against everything that they're throwing at him right now. Blue, please attack. Um, well, he was typing. So he didn't really have the position he wanted initially. And he's just asking Green why he's doing this. And, well, it's because you're trading here. This is really smart. That was really smart from Green to hit their trade. Green knows what's up. Um... 
Is blue allied with green? Oh, blue is allied with green. And now green says nothing personal. But green wasn't actually enemy to blue. Which explains the confusion there. Okay. Scorpions are good against elephants. I haven't actually seen scorpions against siege elephants that much before. Yeah, okay, right now, with red out of the picture, I think that gray and blue are going to eventually crumble. Purple's going to eventually crumble. That's the way this is looking for me right now. Because they're losing trade, and they've got a lot of players attacking them. And we've even got some uh, sneaky little Arambai back here in green. And it's just simply four players versus three, right? <clears throat> um, yeah, Henry, I appreciate the info. We did not intend to do all text. It was just a mistake, so we're rolling with it at this point. Yeah, I know scorpions have bonus damage against elephants, but I wasn't sure if that applied in the same way to armored elephants. Obviously, though, it is still an elephant. But the problem is there's not enough meat shield for the scorpions. And elephants are tank, so we've got a whole lot of them here. Over on this side, cannon galleons. This is pretty sick. Cannon galleons taking out the castles. Aaron by here to sit and trade, and it's just looking stompy, right? But what could spice it up as yellow brings a monk with a relic in the middle of the battle? Is he trying? Is this his apology gift? I don't know exactly what's happening. He's brought the, the relic to the enemy. But, um, you know, Gray's going to see the writings on the wall and possibly send his king towards somebody. Blue as well. And purple's now turned on Arch, which I guess had not happened before. And purple may choose to push in this area, but it's probably just trying to defend from these units. I think Gray will be fine for now. But the resources can't be good for the team that's lost trade. And the push just continues to get look worse and worse and worse here for the defenders. Fair point, by the way. It doesn't look like there's going to be a lot of wood left on this map in the long run. Like, if this game goes on to, for another hour or so, which community games can do. There are the words. Gray says, I'll try to suicide bomb them with transport. This is why we do Exploding Kings. Because otherwise, it's like, well, Gray can't do anything. He can have no impact on the game. <clears throat> Everyone just gets grinded down. And then the game eventually ends. I don't really have any water control down here. So it would be possible to maybe get there. And they want to snipe orange. But I think blue and purple are going to be too preoccupied with defending. We do have Siege Elephants from blue. Orange is probably the weakest. I know score doesn't indicate that. As his bomber cannons and his longbows have been insane. But at least based on what I saw earlier, like economically, he hasn't really fortified much. Where's Gray's King? Okay, Gray's King is back here now. But he can't easily get a transport ship. He would need to get a dock over here. Because Green still has Navy on that shoreline, just slowly destroying things. Has not been the most eventful game thus far. Orange does notice this. Red's probably like, well, it's eventful for me. Purple's trying to support. Running into the castle fire. The king is in there, so it's possible the king will have to eject, but there's not going to be anything there to kill that king. And now Gray is on the move. Yeah, the longbow's here. They've got 188 kills. Woo! -hoo -hoo -hoo! That's wild. And Gray's King is on the move. Now, does Green know this? Does he have an idea? Because he does have an army here. He might be looking around. He might just be looking for castles, honestly. I don't think he's paying attention to this. And there goes Gray. Get in. <laughs> Where are you going? <laughs> no! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> the guts to get into that <laughs> transport. But there's a cannonball headed that way. Man, all right. So Gray's on the move. Gray says, I'm practically dead. I'm sending the nuke. Ay, ay, ay. Now, everyone else is kind of dying. 
I like how blue is telling gray what to do, even though gray already has the plan. Gray's like, yeah, I got it. Thank you. Okay, yellow just researched treason. And he signals and says, on water, king. So he's letting his team know. So they got to make some navy here. And in the event of the winning team trying to do that, they might actually be pop capped. I've not seen green make anything. Green's actually loading up his own transports. And Teal's like, who? Gray King? And oh, 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 the fishing ships just spotted it. So Yellow again notices it. They're spending gold for treason. Again, Orange is not dead. He, he must have lost the castle. I'm sorry I didn't actually show that. The King is out in the open, though. There's a lot of things happening. Yeah, look, Teal's trying to queue up galleys, but he's pop caps. And Gray's thinking maybe he should run in here because he doesn't see this castle. Ooh, this could be bad. Like, he's gonna die. We know that. But he's thinking he could loop in and get as close as possible, but there is another castle there. Maybe Teal didn't have ballistics? Oh, no way he weaves his way through there. Huh! He got pretty far, though. He got pretty far, and Teal noticed it. So, Gray, well done to you. Because you're able to get a little bit of revenge here. And Teal's on the move. You need to run the other way. He's like, oh, God. The panic is real. Oh, the hesitation could kill him. But I think he's going to be okay. Oh, he's dead. Woo -hoo 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 -hoo. Okay, I bet you Red's pumped to see that. Teal did try and help, obviously. The Stealth R Us says, dang, you could see... You could see he realized he was running the wrong way for a moment there. And so now, there's going to be an explosion which will affect green. It doesn't kill green. It does take out some fortifications. And now there's one less player on this team that's been extremely dominant. Blue says, orange, we can still team up against yellow. It's an interesting conversation to be having because yellow's score is pretty dominant. Orange's score is pretty dominant as well. I'm sure he's feeling good. Blue's doing the right things. He says he's too strong. Will kill everyone. And I think that could be considered accurate here. I mean, these longbows are still looking insane. But, uh... Yellow's just looked dominant. And I think he has looked like the better player. And as I mentioned before, if you follow community games, you know he's been around the longest. Let me look at the stockpiles real quick. Stockpiles at the limit for purple. And not at the limit for blue somehow, but it is kind of at the limit for yellow, though. Yellow has 61 gold income. Hmm. Yeah, I wish you could put kings in siege towers. Where is his king? Says orange. Two purple and blue. And wait a second. Now purple says in your base about to go boom. Is he trying to mind game them right now? <laughs> <laughs> Orange is probably freaking out like what? Yellow's probably like what who are they talking about? Who's gonna boom what? Green the same. I mean blue is the only one moving his king, and he was just moving his king further back. That also doesn't help though. If you're if Orange is actually gonna try and kill yellow, you ideally would give him information. You can't find out where your allies' kings are with treason. You have to be enemies before you get that information. I think it'd be cool to have a separate tech where you could pay to get allies king information. I thought of that last a couple weeks ago. And ever since, I've wanted it more and more. It is cool, though, how, like, you do kind of have to feed. In situations like this, you have to ask someone who's allied with your target to pass along info. That aspect's kind of cool. Or vice versa. I think having two techs, though... Like, make it more expensive to find out where your allies' kings are, and maybe there's not a notification. That'd be really cool. Yellow's king refuge is under attack because he is here. Kristoff, his first community game. He's got longbows. They're not as long, but they're speedy. At least with their shots. But no! He doesn't have the range! No! And Yellow notices the whole alliance is just going to be ruined here between orange and yellow, which is really good for everybody else. And I'm sure Kristoff has been dreaming of like, successful king snipes. 
You know, if you were to ever get into a community game and he just needed to get closer to the castle. That's the key there. Just get closer to the castle first, surround the castle, then attack it. Probably the one moment where the fact that he didn't have the range because it's all text really works against him. Um, could be really bad for orange. Like, I think purple and blue don't necessarily have to trust him long term. And now HUDs is saying kill orange, but is only saying that to green, right? So, Orange has officially joined Blue and Purple with this. He just allied Blue and Purple. And I have to give Average Rye Bread Consumer a lot of credit. Because he thought to reach out and have this type of conversation. You know, Yellow's going to kill everyone, blah, blah, blah. All of which might be true, but he actually played Diplo there. Also, super gutsy and super ballsy of Orange to have his king out in an open field. Just, just admiring the work that this, this beautiful farmer is doing here. And not have it in a castle. Like, does he even know his king is there? Is he going to notice right now? <laughs> I hope he notices. <laughs> Will yellow notice? <laughs> Bruh. Okay. Now, blue, I don't think, has picked up on the fact that orange has joined his side. So, that's kind of an interesting thing here. Blue is going to have to realize that. Green says he has a lot of army. Where is it? Green has definitely played this game for the long run with all the towers. I guess he's sending a lot of his army through the middle right now. Oh my god. That king is right there, dude. None of them know. Oh, that's so rough. Full tech tree, which was not planned. So the Britain longbows have thumb ring, but not the extra range. They do also have bomber cannons. Yellow's angry. Orange poked the beehive. I don't know if anyone's ever gone up to a hornet's nest and messed with it. That's kind of what happens here. And now the king's moving. But tell me that's because he noticed. Okay, it's moving like it's headed towards his only castle. A good work here from Yellow to utilize, you know, Step Lancers, Champions, Eagles. Like just a, a giant mix of units. And now the king is safe. Poof. I don't think Green can do it on his own against Full Halb and Scorpion. Um, obviously, he could make different types of units, but I just don't know if he can do it on his own. Blue and Purple are in a good spot. Blue especially, because last I checked, Blue has a lot of resources. And if Orange is going to send his King towards anyone, it's probably going to be Yellow now, because he is on Team Blue and he is on Team Purple. Yes. And Blue is saying Orange is our friend. He's making sure Purple knows, which I like. I would appreciate that if I was Orange right now. I'm not sure I would appreciate that my eco is being destroyed and that I don't have any physical help in form of army, but yeah. You, had he, you know, you got the snipe there. It's a completely different situation for you right now, Orange. Yeah, everyone always gets so confused with all text because they're, they're trying to understand why people are making certain things. So I can only apologize to people who are showing up and getting confused. That kind of comes with the territory. Let's check stockpiles again. Extremely high res for blue, despite not having any gold uh, gold income. Yellow. And then uh, green, both in good positions as well here. But orange is going to die. right? He doesn't have the eco anymore. And he has one single castle. Well, purple is going to look to add trade. And blue is saying we need to kill maybe the alternative to adding trade just spend the resources you have now and try and kill them i think adding some trade is really nice add some trade right like add 20 trade cards before you move out and really go for an attack because if the opponent has gold they're most likely going to be able to find a counter to you okay king is in there aren't will defend though ram's going to go down and the dust has kind of settled, but there's more dust of floats now because you just start to see all these buildings get destroyed. Blue says, okay, I will try one desperate all-in. Interesting. I would have loved to see siege rams here, honestly. But, I mean, I guess you could still destroy these buildings pretty fast. It just feels like taking out these production buildings would be so valuable. 
Orange has um, 10 villagers. Or 10 eco. I assume that's all villagers. So not pretty. Orange is maybe going to try and reboom, but was building the TCs and then left because the cannon galleons from green. What an effective move from green to have some navy here in this game. It's been really good. The longbow's still doing their thing. Still trying to hold. But, I mean, it's going to be hard to replenish the longbow mass over time. And also hard to keep this castle up. Holy scorpions, though. Can you imagine with an onager? Woo! I think you could kill 20 scorpions with one onager shot there. Because they're stacked. A blue is bringing in rams. And also trebs. So that's cool. But now green is here on yellow. Uh, on orange, excuse me. And guys, if orange were to die right where this castle is, I think it could actually kill purple as well. Yeah, purple's not too far away there. It'd be right on the border of the explosion, but still. Why is green so out of our focus? Well, green isn't actually taking part in that many engagements right now. Despite having lots of army. He's focused on the navy, which is constant. And he's been trying to transport groups, which is pretty cool. It, it, he's just fighting here, and he's been taking some losing battles. And so he says we are losing, but the king for orange is moving. But it's not going to be fast enough. If he was going to make a move, maybe it needed to happen earlier. And that is going to be the least destructive explosion we've had this game. Purple apologizes. Purple is here trying to save orange, but yeah, it really needed to happen earlier. But honestly, that ends up being good for purple and blue. They brought orange onto their side. Orange did their bidding for them. Might not have accomplished much, but that is just one less player that yellow and green can team with. But yellow and green are the top two players. Like, these guys are heavy favorites right now. But, I mean, how Scorpion's pretty good against everything we're seeing. Yellow says, if you can sneak some, go for it. I will hold. Yeah, now that get, that makes things interesting because we know that green was just going to consider it with bomber cannons and Arambai. And green saying, I will try on blue. Definitely doable if you loop around the backside. And still yellow has all these production buildings. And we've got 19 stables. We've got 14 barracks. I think that purple and blue should make some progress, but I don't think they'll make enough progress where they can also pay attention to everything else. Purple says publicly, Yellow, I don't know if I would trust you if you're going to turn on your ally. I'll have to think on it. And Yellow says, I mean he turned on me 11. And Green says, nice try, too obvious. I think Purple's trying to make Green think... That yellow was just talking to him asking for an alliance and so green doesn't and he's still trying to make that joke he's like what do you mean green we're talking about green here not the other guy yellow didn't get it green seems to realize what the attempt is there and blue i think has lost confidence that this is doable and i'm starting to lose confidence in them as well i love how purple earlier what what was the word I am amenable. And Blue said, I don't know what that means. And now yes. Purple goes with subterfuge. <laughs> yes. Green says, Pink is trying to divide us. And that's exactly what he's what he was trying. And Purple says, divided we rise. Okay. I'm going to be honest. I know sub uh, subterfuge is a word. Don't really remember the exact definition. Does that mean, does that mean separate and, and go on your own journey in life? Definition time, please. Give me a little copy and paste in chat. It's a really fun word to say. Don't know if I, I've ever used it in a cast, so. Sneaky Diplo equals subterfuge? Gotcha. So, trying what he was trying, essentially? I don't think that's going to cut it. Sneaky, sneaky? Okay. Now, they could try and be sneaky in the game itself, but, I mean, look at all these freaking towers. They're bombard towers, too. 
bunch of tryhards, the two of them. But if you make more than five Bombard Towers in a game, you are a mega tryhard. And while you will get points for the victory, there's also a group of people who will be like, well, yeah, not impressed. Show me something I haven't seen before. <laughs> oh, boy. Deceit in order to achieve one's goal. Okay, that's the definition. That's a really good definition. Thank you. So, where's Green's transports at? Okay, they're here. So, Green's going to be making a move into blue. Um, This is obviously a daring attempt from purple. And this is the daring attempt from blue. But blue is going to be hit here shortly. The main force from yellow and from green, they're both making moves. Just passing here <laughs> from purple. So hoping he doesn't get spotted. This is real risky, though. I mean, there's potential for navy out here, but it feels like that's their only way. Green's trying to be sneaky. Blue hasn't shown any sign of noticing this yet, but you don't exactly want to run the other way either. It's going to be bad regardless. This could be interesting. We could have three players die at the same time. Okay, blue is noticed, so blue will be alive for a while. Seems like purple doesn't care about a top three finish. And purple just wants to get some level of revenge here. Purple could technically... Give blue the victory if this explosion can kill both yellow and green. But he would have to get here and then have yellow and green not notice. He just says yeet. Don't say yeet! <laughs> don't say, don't give him a heads up, bro. Not, the memes aren't worth it. Also, I'm concerned this transport ship's going to get sniped. He, he doesn't, he knows there's a tower there somehow. That's good. Blue's on the run. Dude. Dude. Guys, he researched trees and he can see where the kings are. Ah! He's just going for yellow, though. He just wants to get yellow, which is also understandable. And now his king is dead. However, yellow spotted it. Knows it's happening. Maybe he saw the word yeet and thought to pay attention. And while well, yellow's going to lose a majority of his fortification... Well, yellow, I don't know if you're far enough away. Maybe he is. This is a big explosion. Okay, he is far enough away. Explosion happens. Decimates yellow. Blue is also here yes. at the same time. And that does not kill yellow. Great heads up play from him. But again, like, purple has nothing, right? Your head should be on a swivel because purple showed no resistance here. And said yeet. Sorry, perp. Tried to snipe yellow, but I failed. It's all good, orange. I wouldn't be too disappointed. You had a really good game overall. Some lessons learned on just getting a little bit closer to the castle. Maybe you're used to uh, <clears throat> the normal longbow range as well. <laughs> Orange says I couldn't find the Diplo menu in time. Rip. This is high pressure stuff. It's hard to get those timings right. Right now, yellow. We'll check the stockpile. I mean, just can't compete in the same way green can. Green has more gold in the bank, more, way more food, and even more wood. I wonder if it's possible for blue to make a deal with yellow right now. Unlikely, but yellow is pretty crippled by all that. And yellow says that hurt. He's saying that to green. So that is an admission of weakness, which is probably making green feel amazing. Feels like blue's just gonna eventually die, and then green's gonna get the win. But maybe blue has something in store for us. I remember blue had a lot of resources at one point. And, uh, well, still does somehow. I don't really fully understand how, but... Yellow needs houses. Okay, I noticed this. Wait a second. He's talking to green the whole time. Green says, yeah... Wait a second. Think about it, guys. Yellow's weak. This is a moment where green could turn around and kill him because he's weak, right? So he's vulnerable, but green still trusts him because he's like, oh, we're friends, right? He's never He'd never turn on me, especially if he's weak. And we think blue's going to eventually die. 
So Blue's gonna start chatting right now, and they Blue might even point out, like, how's this gonna end between you two? And okay, Green noticed it. Green noticed it. And Yellow laughing right now. I'm not sure if he's laughing about it, but I think this is gonna be the classic just passing. Like, I, I, sorry, bro. I didn't mean to click on my army into your base. It was a mistake. Green is in another castle. Notice how Yellow's leaving now. Like, nope, nothing to see here. And Green says, man, too many troops for a sneaky move. Okay, so is he going to double back with less than? <laughs> he garrisons in the castle. <laughs> oh, they're looking. They're currently looking through all the rooms in the castle to find out which one the king is in. So they could stab him in his sleep. But in Age of Empires, you can't stab him in their sleep. You have to wait until the king leaves the castle. Um, you will turn on each other anyways when I am dead, so why wait, says Blue. I love that. Yeah, why wait? Just do it now. <laughs> and Green says, we will end this like the gentlemen that we are, but the South will win. Uh. Dude, Yellow, I would get out of here with these halves right now, okay? I love how Green called out Yellow for not being sneaky enough, and then Yellow immediately just hopped in his castle. <laughs> no hesitation. Oh, he's playing the sympathy card. He says, don't you feel bad going 2v1 versus a low legend? Look at you guys. Oh, you're so big and mighty picking on a noob. But Yellow is just waiting for an opportunity to come in here with Trebs, right? Like, I'm not sure where yes. they are. Trebs or Rams or something. He wants to have the military in position for when Green does this. What's funny is Green, he might be using Select All Castle, but no. The other castles aren't producing anything. So he, well, that one is. Anyways, the point is, is he, if he were to select this castle and look at the units inside, would see Yellow's in there, which is funny to me. Hmm. Top score all game, you should feel proud. Okay, so this is green to yellow? I'm not top score, says blue. Oh, oh boy. I didn't catch this. Oh man, this is going to be interesting. Okay, so he he has an escort party. <laughs> okay, this is why you have an escort party. Green says you were, or tried to say you were, and yellow says at one point. Okay, so, well, the Wold Raiders have died. I think you need more Wold Raiders to come escort this king. But he could make it pretty far. I'm glad he's not going for it now, because I really want to know what yellow's plan is, if yellow has a plan. It really does feel like they're trying to kill blue first. It's like he wants to wait until blue's about to die, and then he'll make his move. Blue even has the scout here. The top guys should be researching treason a lot, right? Like if you've got over 10k gold, you should be researching treason and getting the pings. But well played to the players that have kind of been in rough positions this game to actually utilize the exploding king aspect. Blue says it's not nice to destroy my base. Blue is making army to defend this, but again, just outnumbered. Siege is coming too, so days are absolutely numbered. You see this castle, so you can avoid that. There's nothing here. Mm, but you would have to get past the wall somehow, which is unlikely. But, but, hello? Hello? <laughs> okay, well... <laughs> Teal's castle was hidden in plain sight. <laughs> I guess because he had vision on it, he got confused and thought that maybe it was an ally. <laughs> well, it's okay. <laughs> he says, crap, that was lame. Whoops. <laughs> Whoops the daisies. And now yellow might make his move. And actually, the king moved for green, and yellow's gonna hop back in real quick. <laughs> He's bringing siege elephants too. Like, yellow doesn't want to do any of this deal crap. Green says, 
Shall we do this as night or as beasts? I see you are ready for the... And yellow says, let's make fun and fight. And now we are going to see them fight. Um, well, as I've said many times over the years, you really need a range unit to snipe kings properly. The king can just easily run away. The king has just moved into a tower. It's going to be difficult for yellow to get this job done. King is right here for yellow. Green is using bombard cannons against that castle. And this might be pretty quick because they are right up in each other's business here, right? Like, it's not going to be easy for them to really get away from some of the craziness right now. Uh, Paladin sniped the bomb. Oh, Paladin doesn't snipe the bombard cannons. So, Castle for Yellow is still exposed. Yellow is massing a lot of units here. And Military Count Green has more right now. Now, Bombard Towers don't do much versus Siege Rams and Armored Elephants, as you're seeing here. So, the Armored Elephants are actually slowly taking up buildings. And Green has forgotten about all of this, because Green is really distracted. Yellow's going to lose the castle, though. I think by the time any units from Yellow get here, the castle will have ejected the king. Uh, it's been a weird game. We didn't try to do all texts, but it happened. Thanks for that, by the way, non-Fox. Uh, my fault, though, because I didn't double-check the settings. And Yellow's going to run this way. Yellow will be fine. And, well... The yellow is, is in green's base still. Small side note, which is actually rather important, is the fact that yellow has castles, so he can actually kill trade with those. Like, I think... Or, 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 or green has castles, sorry. So I think that some trade cards will actually continue to work for green throughout this, and that might play its role. But man, yellow's got so many stables right now. There's nine elephants versus 44 elephants. And we've got siege rams as well. I don't think green can do this. He's just being outproduced. He is going to make halves. But remember, you don't have all the extra Burmese attack because it's all techs. And Aztec elephants getting the job done. Yellow was ready. Green may be looking for a snipe right now. Blue trying to chat up the dead people. Well, I'm not sure if any dead people still have the game up. But yeah, this is gonna this is still gonna take some time. Right? These bombard towers have 117 kills and counting. It's gonna be above 300 at this rate. And and bombard towers are really strong. There's a reason in the past we used to play with a mod that would make bombard towers cost as um, or cost population space because lots of Bombard Towers is just simply a very solid way to play the game if you really want to win bad. You stockpile trade, and then with that trade, you go for lots of Bombard Towers. Wow, both players really low on gold. So this game might never end. Because how are you supposed to take out the Bombard Towers? They might have to end up doing a deal. We'll see. Green is the army count now. Oh, man, what are you trying to say here, Kristoff? <laughs> <laughs> okay, here goes green. Okay, these are Bombard Tower. That is the king. Is yellow just giving it up? He just says, nice. Good setup. I'm not sure exactly how that ended. I'm not sure if that was intentional from yellow. His words didn't make me seem like it was intentional. But it might have just been like, respect, bro. You had really good defense and a good game. Obviously, they fought alongside together for a long time. In the end, Green wins after killing two kings, including a teammate he had fought alongside for a long time and another teammate that he fought alongside for a while. Uh, that's kind of how this game panned out. We had two separate teams. And the stronger team ended up getting the job done. We did have some crazy attempts, though. We had multiple attempts from players trying to get their kings to the players' bases to explode them. Didn't pan out, except for that one instance where Teal ended up dying to... Uh, shoot, whose explosion was it? Was it Gray's? I think it was Gray's. So well played there from Gray. Um, 
Look at the res collected in this game. Well, KD as well, obviously. Very even game as far as KD is concerned. No one really dominated except for the Britain player. But here's the economy where HUDs had more of every single resource here. He was also more active on the field because he had more kills this game. But we kind of knew the problem for him would be he lost the majority of his base once Purple showed up. So Purple is probably the biggest reason why Yellow didn't end up getting the win. Purple tried to get Yellow, didn't kill the King, but ended up really nuking his economy. And Green was lucky to avoid some of that damage as well. Imagine if that king from purple would have gone in the middle of green and yellow. It would have damaged both of them significantly, potentially killed both of them if players wouldn't have noticed there. There are anyways, for, for those that watched on YouTube, hope you enjoyed another community game. Let me know your thoughts in the comments as always. And I, I still got to ask questions about this Rye Red guy. We still got to look it up. What is a characteristic of an average Rye Bread consumer? The one thing I will say is I noticed a lot of smiley faces. So is that an indicator? Like, look at all the smiles. No need to destroy my base anymore, suckers. Smiley face. Oh no, smiley face. GG, perp. Smiley face. Apparently, rye bread makes you smile.